am Heather Marzigliano from Grace on Broadway HP Distribution and Grace on Design. We, once a month, work with a new paint company and collaborate because we think it's super fun and exciting to try new paints and get to know paint owners. Um, we want to show that our products work with all of them and we want to show that there's so much out there to create with and work with and get to know. So, this month, we are working with a company called Plaster Paint, and they sent me this like awesome, look at this, it's like huge, super informative information packet on how to use their paints, which I think is so helpful, especially when you're working with a new paint, because all paints sometimes have different rules and stuff like that. We're going to be doing a super cute little Bombay. We got it from one of our neighbors. And she said that she was excited to see what I would do with it. So I promised her that I would make it cool. So the colors that we're using with this one, because they go with one of those papers. And what I asked for. So this is. A color called Timeless, um, Timeless Burgundy. All right, so it's not much different than the color that's here. I just wanted it more solid. Um, I did not treat this with anything to prevent bleed through because the color we're doing is very reminiscent of and close to the color that it was and is. But it's just pretty. Not pretty. Pretty pretty. So. I also got, this is Ivory Lace. This is their really, really, really pretty metallic called Ruby Slipper. Look at that. So pretty. Then I have Pure White. So, like, so this one is just off like a smidgen. So I haven't quite decided if we're doing bright white or or what we're doing that way. Um, I have true black and this is cool. I'm excited to try this. Um, these are all their waxes but I have heard from the owner and I can't wait to try that this liquid wax, you can decoupage with it. Sounds super cool. I'm in. Want to try it. And then I have this cute little BB gold. It's called honey gold. So those are the colors. So we're talking like a burgundy, black, white, and gold. We are going to use a paper called Fury. This is the color of that we're painting and this is that. I have my fan brush and this has already been cleaned except for that little fuzzy that wanted to land on it. really pretty that you can see some of the green and we might keep it that way. That's the hardware on. That's the time in the morning. So what I want to do is I will paint the burgundy. fan brush by Zebra and we do sell them on our page which is hp-distribution.com so let's get on with it now that we did that Oh, it's 
just about done. I'm gonna go in, I will add the second coat. So, where, where do we start? This is painted in um, Plaster Paint Company's One Step Paint. It's their Timeless Burgundy. You can't really see it from here, but it's on here. Um, this is a, a one step paint, so it doesn't need a top coat. And listen, when I hear one step paint, I have to say a lot of times I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. This is hard as nails. Like this really dried hard. Um, I would be comfortable with this really truly being a one step. It has this really pretty like satin type sheen to it. It dried with almost zero paint lines. And because it was a new paint for me, I really kind of ran it through the ringer. And on top, I purposely did like janky painting. You know what I mean? Like I was backstroking, I was like overloading my brush. I was doing really, really just not normal things to see if it would lay. And it did. So I truly um, am excited that I got to try this product. And I can say that so far, I'm absolutely loving, loving, loving this paint. So that is plaster paint. They are out of Arkansas. Our friend and content team member, Cheryl, taught us how to use water when you decoupage. And at first, when I saw her doing it, I was like, water? You're spraying the paper? Why are you spraying paper? It's gonna make the paper thin. What are you doing? Like, I would had all these feelings, okay? Because no one ever taught me to spray the paper before you put it on. So she was like, yeah, I'm gonna spray the back of the paper. It's gonna be great. And in my head, it made sense. But in like, all my feelings, I was like, well, what is this girl about to do? And it worked. And then I saw someone else do it. So I was like, all right, so today, I tested it on this little chest that's over there and it was amazing. So we're gonna do it. It's my second time ever doing it this way. But so far it's proven to be like a no wrinkle way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put Fiori on the front. We're gonna put her companion paper on the side. And then I have a lot of fun colors from plaster paint that I wanna use like on this bit of the leg. Okay. Liquid. Oh, did it. Okay. So this is plaster paint paste. That's, nope, that's not what I want. I want this one. It's liquid wax and gloss. And that's what we're going to use. I think it smells good. Something smells good. Get our protective film off. All right, so it's a liquid. It's definitely not like a wax consistency. It is liquid. All right. I just got it all over me because that's how I roll. So now we have our Mr. Bottle. We have our paper and we have our liquid wax. And I have my zebra fan brush. And according to Cheryl, we're going to paint on our, our liquid wax. We're going to mist the back of this and we're going to get zero wrinkles. I tried it one time on a chest over there. Let's see if I can do it now. Love, love, love. Okay. All right, now that's on. See, it's nice and even. There's nothing crazy. I'm gonna spritz this with my mister. Maybe like, okay. You don't wanna get too much water, but you wanna have some, is what she said. And I think the last time, I got like overzealous with my mister. You can't tell me some of anything. I think everything needs more, right? Let's go up to the top. I'm going to press down so that we have our starting line. 
And then Cheryl uses a squeegee. I use my hands or a rat pad. And we're just gonna work our paper down. of whatever I'm just going over with my finger and kind of just working them out okay make sure it's all on and touching but you don't want to like push the drawer back in until it's dry so down here is decorative on its own you see how that is so I think I think we're gonna cut this and let it be just to right there. And then we'll put some colored painting here. So now, let's spin it. Cause she's on, can you, oh there, you can see her better. Is she pretty? She is pretty. Let's to the side. And we're gonna do the same thing and let's add her companion paper, okay? And this is the companion paper. So it'll be fun, right? So what I wanna do, so I'm basically just creating a line on where to cut. It's probably gonna be the easiest. Cause I feel like when you have, um, like too much paper that you're working with, it just makes it clumsy. So I'm gonna cut it just on the outside of where we did that. So we're still gonna have a little bit too much. Um, but I don't wanna be working with this entire sheet if I don't need the entire sheet. You know what I mean? Cause then it just kinda gets in your way. So let's kind of just use what we need and then we can trim it back with box cutters later if necessary. But at least this is like much more manageable. We don't have like all this extra paper kind of everywhere. All right, so plaster paint, liquid gloss and gloss is what we're using. We are going to paint the area that we want to decoupage. So we definitely want to make sure that there's coverage because before the reason we ended up with that like air bubble is because the top coat either dried before we got to it or it didn't have like good enough coverage with the top coat before. So now we are literally going to put, we just want coverage at this point. So coverage, coverage, coverage. Wherever you don't have a top coat, that's where you're kind of leaving risk for a bubble. I think we're on, I think we're good. So now we have our paper and our mister. I might start misting myself. It's a lot. All right, let's mist our paper. I think that's okay. And the reason you missed your paper is that your paper will kind of puckle and wrinkle as it absorbs the water. But if you put the water on the back to begin with, it won't do that. Or at least it won't do that as much. And I can say that in the past, this is now my third application that way, it has absolutely helped uh, cut back on any wrinkles that I think I would have gotten. Now, the back of this paper is white, so since we wet the paper, it does make the paper thinner. 
and when the paper is thinner, you can kind of see through it a little bit. And when I did my last one, I kind of freaked out because I was like, oh my goodness, you can totally see the color underneath it like way too much. Because uh, I wanted my paper to be opaque and not see through. But the nice thing is, is it's just when the paper is wet. Once my paper dried, you no longer could see through it. I'm just gonna use my round pad to help me get around this corner. Audio jungle. And then once this is dry, I don't want to mess with it now because I want all these bits to kind of dry on. I'm going to come in with a razor and we're going to kind of razor these edges off, okay? Because they're obviously longer than what we want. So I'm just kind of pressing down or, you know, you can use it like this just if it's soaking wet because we sprayed it with water. Don't, uh, just be mindful. All right. So that's the side, and this is the front. So we need to do something from here to here to marry them all in design. So my immediate thought is that from here to here, what if on this edge here, we need to do some kind of pattern? What if we did like black and white stripes? just in this little bit here. And then what it here, we just kind of embellish these lines, but leave it like that. I think that's my plan. Black and white stripes to the side of her. Gold, metallic, that kind of stuff in here. And then this design over on the side. Okay. Oh, we have film. Wow, this is pretty. Wait, guys. What? Look at this color. You can't see it yet. I'm going to show you. Look. What? That is so pretty. I'm going to use the ruby slipper here. Because that's so pretty. And this is super pretty. And then maybe we'll put gold here. And like gold here. And then do it again down here. her she's awesome we have the gold we have the metallic red we have the burgundy they're looking kind of cool but we're not gonna cut into her until it's completely dry if you start cutting and it's not dry that's when you make your great big mess so here is this is it this is plaster paint true black and here is another. I'm obsessed with these fan brushes. They're awesome. You know why? Because you can paint little this way and you can paint wide this way. Alright. So, that looks awesome. I really like the direction we're going. I think she's going to be really fun. I decided to kind of make her all extra schnazzy and extra special. So, but there it is. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do this side. We're going to have to kind of match this side to that side, which is it's going to take some thought. So, let's do our stripes first. So, I painted all the way down here with, it is called True Black by Plaster Paint. So that's what this is, it's True Black. We applied this already and that's, her name is Fury. And now we need to do our stripes. So we're gonna put this one here. Be black, and then underneath here is gonna be black. And then what I did is I did this 
in lots of layers. So we're gonna make this double box white and then we're gonna make the red. We're right about there. Now I have painted my top coat over this, so this is all protected at this point. And now this is gonna be black. So let's protect that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taping out basically all the spots that are black on this side over on this side. And then just that tiny little bit. And then we have our first tape section. They're done. All right, so, ta-da! Everywhere underneath these lines are gonna be these black lines. So, this is pure white by plaster paint. Again, it's their one step, so it's just, it's white. And we're gonna take our art brush. I'm gonna work right out of the lid. I sealed my paper, so when I got a little bit of paint on there where I didn't want it, I was able to just literally take my finger and wipe it back, okay? Now, you see that the white is small here, these aren't gonna stay big and white. They're going to get some of that red metallic. But I'm using my white to make sure that that red ends up being nice and bright. Because if you put red metallic over black or anything over a dark color, you're gonna get a darker shade of your top color. If you put a color, especially metallic or a glaze over a white, you're gonna get a brighter, more vibrant version of it. So that I can, I just got this brand new heat gun last night, so excited. Does anyone else get excited for new tools? Me, hi, I do. Um, let's see if we can, let's get this thing working. There it goes. And we're gonna cheat the process a little bit, okay? works really nice. We're going to do a quick second coat of this white. Okay. So see, that's where we want our color. We want it to be more opaque white than here where you can still see the black coming through, which is fine. This is our second coat and it completely covers it. So you definitely, like in my mind, I want to do these two coats. So we're there. So let's dry this up. All right, so you see that nice crisp line that this tape gave? And it didn't take any of our previous paint off. It didn't bother our decoupage paper. Now, there's a little bit that isn't perfect here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I can see it. Um, it's no big deal, because we still need to add our red and our gold. We are rushing this a little bit, so I'm hoping that... hoping that I'm not rushing it too much. Let's see how it goes. I'm rushing it too much. You guys will learn a lesson from me. This needed to stay because we're not touching the black. But we're gonna split this difference to add the red. So, let's put that back there too. This is what happens when I don't think about processes that need you to think about them. I just get excited and start pulling things off. But no big deal, it's just tape. See, black, white, red. Black, white, red. So the red that we're using is ruby slippers and it's like a red metallic. Look how pretty. 
All right, so now just like with the white, except now we have white under it, so it's gonna make the red brighter and it's gonna stand out. So we're going to put a couple coats of our red ruby slipper. First coat of red is on. Let's get that dried up. but it's dry enough for oops, for a second coat I'm kind of cross thatching my brush strokes honestly because it's metallic over white and I want it bright, but I also want it to really get all the bits, okay? So, I was trying to say that um, sometimes with metallics, it's easier if you do like a couple thin coats <laughs> versus like one super thick coat so that you get the look that you want. So we're just gonna do like a final, and that's all it took. Like this third coat here is really gonna be our jam. It's, it's getting 100% coverage now. It's nice and bright. So, yay! And they look relatively even, right? I'm gonna dry this a little bit because it got like a little smudgy because we we rushed it. But since we're doing like the gold stripes and then the woody bin, it's okay. So to do the gold, essentially we're gonna do the same thing, okay? But what I was doing is I take my tape and I just take this bottom because it's a little too thick and I just kind of fold it over and I just go where a little bit of this white is showing and then we're going to do the same thing and we're going to do a teeny tiny cute little gold line. And we're going to work our way down doing that. This is also where you can kind of negotiate and fix like if your line wasn't perfectly straight or if you did get some smudge you can fix that with where you place your gold line so I have this is honey gold it's very pretty again by plaster paint So now I can see that it's already opaque that way. Alright, now let's dry it. Hopefully you guys don't fall over again. Alright, so. I'm going to stop making this thing mad and start doing things in the actual time appropriate way but that is how we set up our lines um this will be gold that'll be gold you guys will see it it's going to be amazing um but that's how we space out our lines and do all the fun stuff 
This is Fury from our brand new line of designs that are out now. You can order them. And I will get this finished and I'll get a picture up. Thank you for hanging out with me. So I will see you in a few minutes. All right, bye.